So how do you turn your skills and passion for web design, web development, or digital marketing into a highly profitable, low stress business? Well, no matter if you're just starting out or you've been doing this for 15 years, you're about to discover why now is the best time in our history to double down on growing your own digital agency. I'm also gonna address the elephant in the room, the number one question I get asked by freelancers and digital agencies all over the world is how do I get a steady stream of high paying clients who value my work, respect my process, and pay me what I'm worth? I'm gonna explain why everything you've ever been told about lead gen and getting clients is absolutely wrong, and I'll show you exactly what to do instead. And if you stay with me until the end, I'm gonna send you a special worksheet that will help you take everything you learn in this video and implement it in your business immediately. Seriously though, if you don't stay with me until the end, you won't get the worksheet because I wanna reward those of you who take action and commit. Is that fair enough? Cool. In the meantime, make sure you're taking some handwritten notes with pen and paper so you can transfer those notes into the worksheet at the end. So if you're watching this, my guess is you probably have one of the following three problems. You either need more clients, or better quality clients. You need better processes and maybe even to grow your team to make sure your projects are profitable and less stressful, or you need to increase your recurring revenue so you can get off the feast and famine hamster wheel of project work. And the purpose of this video training series is to help you overcome each of these problems so you can move forward with confidence and grow your digital agency because it really is the perfect time to be doing that. Let me explain why. There are three factors working together right now to create this kind of perfect storm and giving you a massive opportunity as a freelancer or digital agency. Number one, we live in very uncertain times. There's lots of crazy stuff happening in the world right now. The OECD recently published a report predicting that the global economy is facing its biggest danger since the global financial crisis. And this has prompted governments around the world to pour billions of dollars into their economies to stimulate growth. Now, I'm not an economist, but I do know from experience that they don't do this without good reason. And I believe the only way to secure your future in these uncertain times is to have your hands firmly on the wheel and to be in control of your own destiny. Look, having your own small business is a fantastic way to express yourself as a creative human being, bring some more beauty into the world, and it's also a great way to get freedom over how you spend your time and it gives you the opportunity to secure your financial future. The second factor is that in the face of all of this uncertainty, the web continues to go from strength to strength. Here are some stats. The average person spends more time online than all other media outlets combined. 80% of all web traffic will be video by the end of 2021. And by the year 2040, 90% of all retail purchases will be facilitated by e-commerce in some way. And yet half of all small businesses don't even have a website. And half of those say that they're thinking about launching a website in the next 12 months. Elementor, a great page building plugin that makes it super easy to build websites, just raised $15 million in funding. And of course, hosting companies have been acquiring other hosting companies and security companies and theme companies and plugin companies. I was recently in the US speaking at some conferences and I was fortunate enough to be invited into some very private conversations and I can tell you there will be many more acquisitions and funding rounds over the coming years in the web space. And the Google search trend for digital marketing is on a fairly rapid incline. Now, what this all means is that the demand for what it is you do as a web designer or a digital marketer is only going to grow. And finally, the third factor is that a digital agency is a great business model. You get to do creative, fulfilling work with great clients that have a positive impact on the world. And the margins are really high because we're selling digital services. But perhaps the most appealing thing about the digital agency business model is the freedom it gives you to work from wherever you want with whoever you want on the projects that excite you. So if you wanna travel the world and run your business from your laptop, like James from Seriously Good Design, or travel the country in an RV with your kids and manage your team from the road, like Amber and Chris from Road Warrior Creative, or work from home so you can spend more time with your kids, like Samantha from Neapolitan Creative. Whatever your version of freedom is, a digital agency is a great business model to support that freedom. Hey, in case you don't know who I am, I'm Troy Dean, CEO and founder of WP Elevation. And here's just a quick backstory. This is a picture of myself and my wife, Amy, and our dog, Lucy. And this is the day that we settled on our apartment here in Melbourne. We'd just taken out a fairly sizable mortgage 
my wife, who at the time was my fiance, was studying full-time at university to become a psychologist. I'm very proud to say that she now is a psychologist and she did the hard yards of six years at university, unpaid work in her placements, and then two years of supervised work. So I was the only one earning any money at the time. And I was in this partnership. I had a web design agency and I wasn't very happy. In fact, I was quite miserable. And my wife encouraged me to shut down the agency and go back out on my own as a freelancer. And I'd just taken out a very sizable mortgage and she wasn't earning any money. In fact, she was living away from home four days a week in a country town in Melbourne as she was doing a placement. And I was just panicking. I had no idea how I was going to pay the bills and how I was going to make things work. But she believed in me and I thought, well, that's enough. If she believes in me, then I believe it and I'm going to make this work. So I went back out on my own as a freelancer and I started to document everything that I'd learned in the three and a half years of running an agency. All the mistakes I'd made, I started documenting everything in a little intranet system. And it kind of felt a bit stupid leaving notes for myself, but I knew that at some point I would bring more people into the business. So I just started documenting the process so I could teach more people in the future. And in fact, one of the first people I brought into the business was someone to help me do the care plans for my clients. And so I had all the documentation set up and Michelle could just follow the process, do the care plans, and that was a huge, huge workload off my desk. So that was a big aha moment for me. The next thing I did was put all of my clients on care plans and fired the ones who refused. And that was the stroke of magic that literally saved my bacon. I had enough clients on care plans, paying monthly recurring revenue, and Michelle was managing those care plans, following the documentation and the process that I'd put in place. So all I had to do was talk to the clients and sell them more consulting services to help them achieve what they wanted to achieve. That gave me the luxury to start to pick and choose the projects I accepted and reduced an enormous amount of stress. It also gave me the freedom to travel with my wife once she'd graduated. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna show you a gratuitous showreel of photos of me and my wife traveling through Europe or Southeast Asia or the United States, working from the beach, driving around in fancy cars and staying at fancy mansions partially because I'm a bit more private than that, but mainly because you don't really care and it's a bit cheesy. I'll leave that for all the other gurus. What you really care about is how you can capitalize on the opportunity that's in front of you right now to build a highly profitable, low stress business as a freelancer or digital agency. Now look, just before we do this, I need to warn you, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. According to Bloomberg, 80% of small businesses will fail and the digital marketing and web space is becoming more and more competitive every day. There's over 200,000 freelancers on Upwork with either web design or digital marketing in their skills. And before you dismiss Upwork as a way to get clients, let me tell you a quick story about Victor. Victor took some of the frameworks that you'll learn in this video series and applied them to the way he attracted leads from Upwork. He became so successful that Upwork actually took notice, reached out to him, and asked him if they could use him as a case study, and then put his picture on a billboard in Times Square in New York City. Now, I'm not suggesting that we're gonna be teaching you how to use Upwork to get clients. That's not what this video series is about. I'm merely suggesting that Upwork is an indication of how competitive the landscape is, and you need to stand out from the crowd in order to survive. I don't want you to be one of the 80% that fail. I want you to be in the top 20% that succeed, and I wanna help you. So I want to tell you a little story about how everyone's got lead gen and finding clients all wrong and what to do instead to get that steady stream of clients coming in the door. I wanted to share a great lesson I've learned from reading books to my little boy at bedtime. One of his favorite books and mine is called Shh, We Have a Plan by Irish author Chris Horton. It's about four friends who spot a bird in the woods. One of the friends calls out, hello birdie, and his friends quickly hush him and say, shh, we have a plan. They stealthily make their advance with their nets in the air, but of course the bird escapes. They follow the bird up trees, across fields, and even splash into the lake trying to catch their prey. And as the friends hatch various comical plans that fail, it becomes clear that their small, quiet colleague has the best plan to attract the bird. He stays still and says, hello birdie, would you like some bread? And before long, he's surrounded by all of the birds in the woods. And as I've been reading this book to Oscar at bedtime, it occurred to me that this is exactly what most of us do when trying to find new clients. 
We hatched these great plans to go after clients and catch them using social media, cold emailing or attending networking events, when in fact the best strategy is not to chase clients, but to attract them by offering them the very thing that they're most interested in. Look, it's human nature to run away from what's chasing us and chase after what's being taken away from us. So don't fight human nature, leave great breadcrumbs and you'll attract great birds. Now, I know what you're saying, well, that's a cute little story, Troy, but where should this trail of breadcrumbs you speak of lead to? And that's a great question. There's only one destination that you need to be concerned with. I'll give you a hint. It's not your homepage. It's not your portfolio page. It's not your blog, your podcast, your YouTube channel, your Instasnap, or your Gram chat. And no, it's not your contact page. Can you guess where it is? It's the top of your funnel. And not any old funnel, your high ticket sales funnel, which is really just a fancy name for your automated sales and marketing system for attracting highly qualified leads and converting them into high paying clients. Now I know I just threw a lot of buzzwords at you then and it's, it's okay, you can take a moment to digest. Let me try and put it in really simple terms that will make sense. What usually happens is a potential client comes along and expresses interest in what it is you do. You immediately drop everything and hurry along to meet them in the hope that they'll become your next client. The first thing you have to work out is whether or not they have realistic expectations and a realistic budget. This requires them to be able to articulate what it is they actually want, and that's rare. It also requires them to understand the value in what it is you do, which is even rarer. But let's pretend for the sake of this exercise they have a decent budget and they know what it is they want to achieve. They'll spend some time picking your brain and unpacking your intellectual property and your experience to help them understand what is and isn't possible. And then at the end of this first meeting, which could last anywhere from 45 minutes to three and a half days, they'll ask you to send them a proposal. You'll go home or back to the office, Google proposal templates, or use the one you've already got on file, which is probably mine, and then send them a proposal and hope for the best. If you don't hear from them for a few days, it's because they don't understand what it is you're saying in the proposal or they're suffering a mild case of sticker shock. In other words, they're trying to figure out why this costs so much. Once you manage to get on the same page about the budget and they actually pay you a deposit, chances are they'll then start to micromanage you through the process, tell you which software you should be using, fail to give you any of the content they said they had organized, and then expect you to pull an all-nighter and some miracles to launch their website by the launch date which of course they failed to tell you until now. Now, of course, not all clients are like this. Some clients are very compliant, pleasant to deal with, respect your process and value your worth, but it only takes one or two bad clients a year to throw your profit out the window. And these are all symptoms of you not having a clear process for the client to follow. See, in the absence of your process, the clients will just invent one themselves and they're not equipped to invent this process. That's why things end up sideways. I'm sorry to say, but it's actually your lack of process or your lack of discipline in following that process that allows this to happen in the first place. Now, the beauty of a high ticket sales funnel is that it's designed in a way that by the time you're sitting in front of your client or you're on the phone with them, they already understand your process. They know exactly how you work and they value what it is you do. You won't be wasting time with clients who have no budget. In fact, by the time they're speaking with you, they've already decided they want to buy your process. Not you, your process. You're just facilitating the transaction. And if your sweet spot happens to be design, strategy or development and you really don't like sales, you can delegate this entire process to another team member. And if you don't have anyone else and you really don't like the sales part of the business, that's okay too. This is perfect for you. See, the thing about having a sales and marketing process in your business is that it's a process that can be followed by anyone. And that's all a high ticket sales funnel is. It's a process to make your sales and marketing efforts consistent and predictable. So what exactly does a high ticket sales funnel look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna send you another video in a couple of days where I'll walk you through the exact funnel I use and thousands of my students use to generate high paying clients. I'll also give you a special worksheet in that video so you can start building your own high ticket sales funnel straight away. So make sure you're getting my emails and if they happen to end up in spam or any other folder, just drag them into your inbox so you don't miss out. 
Now, I'm gonna send you the special worksheet for this video in just a moment, but before I do, I just wanna remind you that now is the perfect time for you to double down your efforts on growing your business as a freelancer or a digital agency. As I said, if you're watching this, you probably either need more clients or better quality clients, or you need to fix your processes or maybe even start to hire some team members to make sure your projects are profitable and less stressful, or you need to increase your recurring revenue so you can get off the feast and famine cycle of project work. And a high ticket sales funnel is going to help you put a big dent in all three of those problems. So please keep your eyes out for the next video. We live in very uncertain times, as I said, and, and this is a great opportunity for you to get your hands on the wheel and control your own destiny. It's a great business model with high margins and the ability to do some really cool, fulfilling work with clients who have a positive impact on the world. And you get the freedom of working wherever you want, whenever you want, and with whoever you want. Because frankly, life's too short to do otherwise. All right, so as a thank you for sticking with me to the end, I've just sent you the special worksheet for this video, which is gonna help you take what you've learned here and start applying it to your business. I hope you've been taking notes. It'll be in your inbox in a couple of minutes. As I mentioned in the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly what a high ticket sales funnel looks like so you can start attracting great quality clients who will love your process and pay you and your team what you're worth. For now, I'd love it if you could leave a comment under this video and tell me your biggest takeaway. And feel free to ask any questions. I promise I'll do my best to get to all of them. Keep your eyes on your email inbox for the next video in a couple of days. Until then, I'm Troy Dean.